Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Root Beer here, looking at more of the 2011 Open Contest, and we are on question four in part B. A group of end friends wrote a math contest considering, uh, consisting of eight short answer problems, S1 through S8, and four full solution problems, F1 through F4, not unlike the open paper. Each person in the group correctly solved exactly 11 of the 12 problems. We create a, uh, an 8x4 table, this one here, uh, inside the square located in the i-th row, rows numbered this way, and j-th columns, columns numbering this way, we write down the number of people who correctly solved both problem S1 and, S, uh, and Fj. So if there was a, a 3 here, Three people solved both S2 and F3. More people might have solved S2, more people might have solved S, uh, F3, but the number of people who solved both of them is, is the number indicated here. If the 32 entries in the table add up to 256, what is the value of N? Hmm, okay. So I can think of maybe two ways to go about doing this. We wanna figure out the number of friends. And so one way we could go about doing this is to consider sort of a smaller, simpler math contest that maybe only had three short answer questions and two full answer questions and, and try and make an analogous uh, uh, setup and, and understand that how the number of friends there are impacts uh, the values that we get in the squares and then the total sum. So that's one way. And so you could look at a smaller one, uh, like this two by three, and then maybe bump it up to a, a five by six or something like that, and, and start experimenting that way, or, or a three by five or something like that, I don't know. But uh, another way we could do it is say, well, what's the possible impact of one friend, one person? So, you know, instead of trying to figure out, well, okay, there could be this many people who answer these two questions, but but then there's some overlap with this. Let's just say each person answers 11 out of 12 questions. So what does each person contribute to, to the uh, uh, numbers in, in the table? Uh, so if, if they get 11 out of 12, they each get one wrong. So either one of the FIs is wrong, or, or sorry, FJs, or one of the SIs is wrong. Okay, those are the possible options. So when I think about my grid here, okay, if they get F3 wrong, but everything else is right, well, then, and then if I just have one person, I've got one person who gets this right, this right, this right, this right, you know, because if they get all the questions right except for F3, then yeah, they've got F2 and S2 correct, and, and everything gets filled out except no person, if we only have one person, no person has S1 and F3 correct because they don't have F3 correct. So one person could contribute a sum of, uh, how many is this, 24, 3 times 4. So 24. Or what could happen? Well, they might get one of the short answer questions wrong. That's possible. And so if, say, they get uh, S6 wrong, well, this person still has S1 and S3 correct, so one person got that correct, and, and we start filling in a bunch of ones. And you might say, well, yeah, this is working for one person, but we don't know that we have one person. You're right. But there's no sort of intermingling between uh, the people. Okay? Uh, there's no way that, you know, this person got this right, so therefore I can conclude that this other person got whatever wrong. Any chart that we make, any way to fill in uh, our, our table, our, our, our four by eight table, or eight by four table, is just going to be sums of charts that look like this one, where one column is all zeros, 
and charts that look like this one where one row is all zeros. We just add these up, add up so many of these. And so here we contribute 28 to the total sum. Okay, so maybe if we say, you know, let F be the number who got an FJ wrong, and S be the number who got an SI wrong, we know N is going to be the sum of S plus F. And we know the total, 256, I believe, yeah, 256 is the sum of all the entries, is going to be F times 24 plus S times 28. Uh, seven, four, seven rows of four or three uh, columns of eight. And so this has to be true, and I'm willing to bet that this is only true for certain Fs and Ss, because uh, both F and S can't be negative. Uh, let's see, we can divide by four, we'll get 64 is 6F plus 7S. Six and seven are, have, are they're relatively prime, they have a greatest common divisor of one. So I think we can work this out. Uh, let's just take 64 and keep multi uh, keep subtracting off 7. So if you subtract 1 7 off, you'll get 57 and then 50 and 43. None of these are multiples of 6 yet. Uh, but, oh, there we go, 36. So that would be S is 1, 2, 3, 4 people got a short wrong. And this would become F equals 6. But let's just make sure there aren't other ones. I mean, there, there won't be because you'd have to have at least 42 remaining. But we'll just very quickly, uh, 29, 22, 15, 14, uh, not 14, 15, 8, 1. None of those multiples of 6. So it has to be S is 4, F is 6, and therefore N is 10. So 10 people wrote, and I can tell you how many got a full answer, full full version, full solution question wrong, and how many got a short answer question wrong. So that's kind of a nifty question. I like that. I think it could uh, sort of easily scale up uh, to, to a harder question. But uh, we solved it not by looking at individual rows or individual columns, but by saying, all right, what does one person bring to the table? And then we, we just sort of added them up from there. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that, that's a wrap for part B. Up next will be part C. We'll start with question number one in the next video. Until then, take care and have a wonderful day.